one of my captors wore many faces. I must have time now to gather my What's up guys, Moby here with another build guide and this time it is Glacial Cascade Inquisitor Self-Cast. If you enjoy watching this content, watching me doing build guides for rather off-meta builds, then please consider liking or even subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much. Glacial Cascade is a very unique spell skill gem in many different ways. On the one hand, it has the tag Cold and Physical. So it's the only spell in the game that has the Cold and the Physical gem tag. This is why we can make use of Awakened Added Cold and Awakened Added Fire Damage in order to gain plus 2 to level of supported skill gems and also we gain the benefits of both of these. Because it's originally a physical spell that converts 100% of physical damage to cold, it benefits from the Awakened Added Fire Damage so that it gains physical as extra fire and also we benefit from the flat cold damage of Awakened Added Cold Damage support. And don't worry, these two support gems are the most expensive ones in the whole build. Also very interesting about the Glacial Cascade is that it has a built-in knockback. So it knocks back enemies. Unlike stun, knockback does not interrupt the enemy's action, but it keeps melee attackers at a distance. So that is a very good defensive layer. And then the final and even most important thing about Glacial Cascade is that it consists of four bursts. And the final burst of these four ones deals more damage and has more area of effect. So if I demonstrate it, you can't really tell where burst one ends and the second one begins, but you can clearly see that the final burst here has more area of effect. So that is burst number four. And burst number three must be somewhere here and two here and one somewhere here. You have to understand that these bursts can overlap. And if you have enough increased area of effect, the bursts can even overlap more. So you can hit an enemy with three different bursts, also depending on how high the hitbox is of the enemy. But what you want in general is that you hit the enemy with the third and the fourth one. It should be like here. So you should look at being at a distance to the enemy that you are like between the third and the fourth one because the fourth one deals more damage. So let's have a look at the gear. I crafted the stuff myself. I just bought the fractured base plus three level of all physical spell skill gems. Of course, as we have learned, you can also use a stuff with plus three level of all cold spell skill gems for the glacial cascade. And then you should craft it with an essence that provides cast speed and you should look for crit, crit multi, spell damage and what else you can find. Then, of course, I feel a bit guilty for using the heat shiver again, but it's just too good um, not to use it. Heat shiver provides so much cold damage as extra fire if you chill and freeze the enemy that it would be foolish not to use it. Also, I took the lab enchantment increased glacial cascade area of effect. It costs like, I think, 30 chaos. 
Then the Yoke of Suffering, I used this one once again. It is very good because originally only your lightning damage is able to shock. And since we are dealing cold and fire damage with this build, this one is very good so that we can also shock. I shocked the Hydra for 50% increased um, damage taken, which is huge. And also um, you have increased damage for each type of ailment you have inflicted on them. Then on the chest we have evasion and energy shield, life, some resistances and suppress spell damage if you can afford it, but you don't necessarily need it because we have lots of block also. Then we have rings, here I have life, uh, energy shield, some dexterity which is needed for the um, awakened added code and then minimum frenzy charge. That is very good. This one I crafted myself. Um, the main thing about it is again 15 life per enemy hit with spells. That is very good since we also can hit uh, multiple times with the Glacial Cascade. This is very useful but then there are also some dead stats on it like the fist damage to attacks and uh, the life gained per enemy hit with attacks which do nothing to us so you can easily get a better one. Also we want crit chance of course. Then the boots, uh, nothing special like life, some resistances and um, movement speed cannot be frozen I have here on top of that and implicit I have increased action speed and um, fizz as extra chaos. And then here we have um, like life and also resistances and the Azanath's gentle touch, which is very good and helps a lot for clearing. Um, also, you have uh, here um, plus spell critical strike chance as an implicit, which is also pretty cheap. It costs like 30 chaos. For flasks, we want to have a life flask. Then we want to have taste of hate, which is very good for a build that scales of physical damage and uh, wants as much code damage as possible. Then I have a granite flask and uh, a movement flask and then we have a flask which gives us consecrated ground which is good for the inquisitor so that it uh, can proc the increased damage taken to the enemy of course if you can afford it you can use bottled faith but this is five divine orbs right now and i just did not want to use any item that is that expensive in the build then I discovered a pretty weird interaction. I have the Goliath allocated, which makes us gain an endurance charge when we stun an enemy with a melee hit. Glacial Cascade is a spell, so it's not a melee hit, but nevertheless, we generate endurance charges by hitting enemies. So I do not know if I overlooked something or if this could be intentional. Maybe that the stun is overwritten by the knockback of the uh, Glacial Cascade and then it does not matter if it's a melee hit or not or something like that. But um, maybe you guys can help me out with that. So let's have a look at the gems. Glacial Cascade is linked to increased critical damage, increased critical strikes, spell echo, awakened added fire and awakened added cold damage. Of course the increased critical strikes could be replaced by something else, maybe increased area of effect or even awakened increased area of effect support, but that one is like two divines and that was even too expensive in order to put it in. And also I'm a bit struggling with critical strike chance even though I am inquisitor. The glacial cascade has a very low base crit of only 5%. On left click I have the Vortex linked to Divergent Life Leech support. You don't necessarily need that. Then Arcane Surge, pretty low level. Then Bone Chill support and also Onslaught in order to get a bit more speed on the build. Then I have the Sigil of Power in order to um, increase the boss damage. And here we have Hatred, Righteous Fire, Wild Righteous Fire I sometimes used but um, it's it's pretty um, difficult. It's also very dangerous if your life pool drops um, pretty fast. Also Herald of Ash, which is very nice for the clear um, and also Herald of Purity, of course. So these two ones give us um, extra damage of the physical. Then we have Clarity, which is important in order to um, have no mana issues. Um, cast my damage taken linked to Immortal Call since we are um, somehow generating endurance charges and also the Frost Blink for leveling, Flame Dash would possibly be better. Then Galvanic Field are linked to increased critical strikes, Ice Bite and uh, Blind Support. You can replace that by something else but it's I think it's it could be all right. Uh, it scales with the shock effect and since we shock kind of well but you can use something else. 
Let's have a look at the tree. Of course, we go with this one first in order to get enough crit chance. We are now at uh, 321 increased critical strike chance. This can be improved easily. And then uh, inevitable judgment, of course, in order to ignore enemy monster elemental resistances. Then we go the defensive route and also we use Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh with Augury of Penitence. Then we go and use a Thread of Hope with very large ring here in order to get the glancing blows to get some block. So here we have the um, we have like 72% attack block and 54% spell block. This is kind of good. Then here we have some life, physical damage and strength. That's good. And also the Iron Will, of course in order to benefit even more from our strength. And here's some cast speed and dexterity. Then um, here I used a lethal pride, which um, makes us gain some strength in order to um, raise the strength so that we gain from uh, the crit from it and also here the spell damage. And here we want to have these stuff notes. They are very important. Gain unholy might on block three seconds. That's good as well. Here we have uh, Divine Judgment and the 40% increased effect of non-damaging ailments. And uh, then here we have a large cluster jewel with uh, widespread destruction, Storm Rider and Blast Freeze. That is kind of optional, um, but it gives some area. Then we have here the, um, this is how we generate power charges. We shock and chill enemies. And here we have the freezes inflict to other enemies. That is very good as well. And here I took magnifier and pressure points. And here we have the forbidden flame and forbidden flesh. Here we went with the recover life and energy shield on block. Here I have just like cast speed. Cast speed is very important so that this uh, build can feel good. Then crit multi life. And here I really like this spot for intuitive leap. Um, we need mana for this build. We need block, uh, spell block especially. Then some recoup, uh, which isn't terribly needed. And also here some spell block. And this one is very good also. Um, herald skills have increased area of effect. You can see that the Herald of Ash is, has a pretty high area of effect. And then we have um, this one also for more damage. And basically that's it. Of course, if you can afford it, um, you can also go here and get the crit chance, but I rather went for the increased area of effect. As I stated, area of effect is very important for the Glacial Cascade. Also, this one here is, is pretty powerful, um, but I just didn't have enough points at level 92 right now. If you enjoyed the video and maybe you even enjoyed some other videos that I've done in the past, please consider liking or even subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for your support and see you in the next video. Thanks and bye.